Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there and God bless everybody. It, it's been really good the last three or four days uh, in evangelism so thanks so much everybody for praying and uh, it's good to be with you. Don't forget my website jasonbirdspreacher.com, Facebook and Twitter and it's good to be with you. We're going to get into the word today. This is a sermon that I preached today at my home church and um, so we're looking at uh, Colossians uh, chapter 3 so you turn to Colossians chapter 3 and we'll read the passage let's pray <clears throat> Dear Father God, we thank you for this day, we thank you for your love and your grace and we give you the prayers, we give you the glory, we give you the honour, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Father God, we just pray that as we look at your word that you bless it, in Jesus' name, uh, bless it to our hearts, Lord, we pray, in the name of Jesus, Amen. If you then be risen with Christ, this is Colossians chapter 3. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things <clears throat> which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid in Christ within God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil conspicuance and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God come in the children of disobedience, in the which you also walked some time when you lived in them, but now you also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man, with his deeds and I put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision nor uncircumcision barbarian Scythian bond nor free but Christ is all in all put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long-suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged, servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye sievers as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and unto, not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. So, that's what we're looking at today. I just want to say again, thank you so much for your prayers and for your support, those who are praying for me. And please continue to pray. Uh, many, many people have come in to talk to us in Manchester, uh, and we need the Holy Spirit to convict people and, and convert people, but there are people coming to us to talk about the Gospel, so that's good. And we had a really good team uh, this week, which was really encouraging. So pray that people will uh, continue to work with us, as a team 
and uh, pray that people would come and and um, get involved. So, so this sermon is called Practical Christianity. <clears throat> Imagine a father tells his son, his son's 10 years of age, and says to his son, son, go and tidy your room, because the, the room's messy. The 10 year old son goes up, and as he goes up, he's gone for an hour, he comes down and says, dad, he says, yes son, have you tidied your room? And the son says, well dad, I've, 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 uh, I've been writing a plan about how to tidy my room. And the dad says, no, 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 go and tidy your room, son. So the son goes up, he's gone an hour, he comes back down, he says, son, how's the room? The son says, dad, I've been Googling and I've been finding out the Greek for room, the Hebrew for room and Latin for room. The father says, no, son, I've asked you to go and tidy the room. So the son goes back upstairs, he comes down with some paper. An hour later, son, what have you been doing? Well, father, I've not only got a plan to tidy my room, I've not only learned the Latin, Greek and Hebrew for learning uh, about my room, but also uh, I've discovered this uh, company that will paint my room in a nice colour, and it would be nice to have it in a different colour. The father looks at his son and said, look, son, go and tidy your room for the last time. That story illustrates uh, how we can procrastinate with God. God tells us to do something, but we put it off. Just like that boy's put it off cleaning his room. He should clean his room, but he's putting it off, making excuses. God has told us what to do with our Christian life, but, but we put it off. We make excuse after excuse. It says... In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new cre cre creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When you became a Christian, you became a new creature in Christ. And it's God's will that you go forward in your new life. Not to go backwards or to go into a wrong direction, but to go forward spiritually in your new life. There's a story of a girl who had a step had a mother, and uh, she had no father, and she was poor, very very poor. One day, her mother married a wealthy man, and this wealthy man uh, looked after them. One day, this poor teenage girl was at college. She's in America, and she comes out of the college this beautiful car with a red ribbon round it. She thought, oh, what a wonderful car. I wonder who's got this new car. Well, next thing she knows, her stepfather steps out and says, I bought it for you, daughter. And the stepfather helped his daughter to get to university. And because she had a new relationship, she had a father in her home, she had a difference. It was a, made a difference in her life, a big difference. And it's the same with you. You're a new creature in Christ. And it makes a difference in your life. It makes a difference. And God wants you to live a different life than the world. He wants you to live a life that is honouring to the Father. So we're looking at practical Christianity. And I want to make my first point. And to live that practical Christian life, that, that new creature in Christ's life, number one, think of heavenly things. Imagine you're in a car and your mobile phone goes off and you're, 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 you're on your mobile phone and you're on a motorway. You're going to crash because you're distracted. Many of us are distracted by the world's pleasures and the world's agenda and we're not focusing on what we should be doing, which is children of God focusing on the things of God, not focusing on eternity. Colossians chapter one, uh, chapter three, verse one to five. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which 
and above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, for you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. You're to set your mind on Christ. You're to set your mind on Christ. If then you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. You're to set your mind upon the things of God. Romans 6 verse 8 says, You have a new... Uh, sorry. Now if we be dead with Christ... We believe that we shall also live with him. Romans 6, 8. If we be dead, we also live with him. He died, we died. He rose, we rise in him. We have a new life in Christ. You have a new spiritual life. And if you have a new spiritual life, you should think on the things of God rather than on the things of man. You turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew uh, chapter 6. 19 to 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust the corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. <coughs> so, we have to make our minds focus on the things of God. <coughs> so often in our lives, we can be so busy, so consumed with our anxieties of this world, that our appetite for spiritual things is small because we've contracted the spiritual life into a little compartment because we've become so busy with this world but we're to think on the things of God 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 to 17 1 John One John chapter two verse fifteen to seventeen. One John chapter two verse fifteen to seventeen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But, the, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. But so often we can be consumed... So often we can be consumed with the things of this life. We can be so bogged down that we're not thinking of spiritual things. We cannot be thinking of spiritual things. So I'll just shut that door because I can hear something. Sorry about this. Sorry about that. <clears throat> oh, just get some water. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 
Look at that, folks. Thank you for your patience. Thank you so much for your patience. So let's get on. So let's just recap. Set your mind on things above. You can't be successful in your ministry, in your marriage, in your relationship, in the work that you're doing if your mind is not fixed on things above. Because you're going to attack the thing and you're going to do the thing in your own strength, in your own flesh, in your own fleshly desires and that will not work. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. Excuse me. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. says, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. Sorry, Romans, Romans 12, sorry, I'm a bit tired. Romans 12, verse 12. Sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm a bit, I'm a bit tired today. Romans 12, verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2, Romans 12 verse 2, sorry. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it's important that you begin to think spiritually in this new man, this new life. The day you became a Christian, the day you believed that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and gave his life for you, the day you believed that, the day you believed that he was your saviour, that he died for you and you confessed your sin and believed in him, you became born again, you became a new creature in Christ, but now you've got to live that life. And, and, and the beginning of that life is to transform your mind, to fix your mind on spiritual things rather than earthly things doesn't mean to say you neglect the earthly things but your mind has to be focused on heavenly things so if you have children you can think oh wow praise God thank you Lord for giving me such wonderful children see you're turning your mind to things of God if you eat a good piece of food like a steak or or a really nice meal praise God and thank him for a meal these are wonderful things that God has given you in your life where you can use it, earthly things, to think about spiritual things, to think about what it's going to be like in heaven. You're going to spend 70, 90 years on this earth, but you're going to spend billions of years in heaven. God has provided you to the treasures of heaven. So think about these treasures. Think about what God has set before you, an open door of heavenly blessing. Meditate on it when you go for a country walk or a walk in the park. Meditate upon God. Meditate often of the things of God. And make your mind and fill your mind with spiritual things. And you'll see a transformation in your life. Secondly, put to death sin in your life. We've looked at think of heavenly things, number one. Number two, put to death sin in your life. Imagine you're driving a car and a rattlesnake is in your car. You're not going to go up to it and say, How, how you doing, rattlesnake? How's it going, bro? And pat it on the head. You're going to get out of that car as fast as you can say a diddly squat. Yeah? Or you're going to kill it before it kills you. But we play around with sin. And not realizing it's like a rattlesnake. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 11. Put to death sin in your life. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil conspicuance, covetousness. Which is idolatry for these things. 
say, The wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walked some time when you lived in them, but now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, and after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor own circumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. But to mortify, therefore, verse 5, the members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil, conspicuous, covetousness, etc. But to put to death sin in our lives. It's not right to... To be a Christian and then at home you're like a little rottweiler snapping at everybody. Angry at everybody. That's not God's will for you. You're to put it to death. You're to put to death the anger. It's not God's will for you to be bitter and unforgiving to someone. You're to put it to death. It's not God's will that you play around with sexual immorality or sin. You're to put it to death. It's not God's will for you. To be living in a way that is not right, you to put it to death. Turn to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark. Uh, chapter 9, verse 43. Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, I think it's Mark. Yeah. Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believeth in me, it is better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck and were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having. Two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never will be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Need thy foot offend him, thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter, halt into life, than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. From the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out, it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For every one shall be salted with fire, and every one's sacrifice shall be salted with salt. So the Lord is saying here, cut it off, cast it out. Don't play around with sin. You wouldn't go up to a rattlesnake if you had a rattlesnake. If you, if, if um, the local uh, pest control had captured a snake, a rattlesnake in your garden and put it in a box, you wouldn't let your five-year-old kid put its hand in the box to stroke the rattlesnake. And you wouldn't put your hand in to stroke the rattlesnake. You'd, you'd say to the pest control, here, here, take it. Take it, go. Leave. I want it to leave my house. I don't want it near me. Because it's poison. But we allow poison in our lives. We allow poison in our lives. Maybe you're at work and maybe your marriage isn't doing well and you start flirting with someone at work and you're saying things. Or maybe uh, at church there's uh, some woman or man uh, and you're flirting with them and, you're, and, and they're saying lewd things and, and you're enjoying it and, and, and it's pandering to the flesh where well, you're playing with poison maybe you're so critical against your husband or critical against your wife that you just can't help being critical because your your parents were critical and 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 you've imbibed it in your life and it's poison in your marriage it's poison in your relationship and maybe your parents, you know, maybe the, the, 
They try to do the best, but they've upset you and you're angry with your parents and you keep playing around with this anger and, it, and, and it's, it's just poison in your life. It's just poison. Romans 8, verse 12. Romans 8, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Verse 13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. If you put to death that which isn't right, you will live. But notice, you've got to do it. God has provided the victory in the cross. When you sin, bring your sin, your addiction, whatever it is, to the cross. Say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. At the cross you're forgiven, and at the cross you have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. But you are to do something. You are to put to death that which is not right. You know, if, if, um, if your uh, temptation is to buy, buy things on credit that you know you can't afford, uh, you buy new shoes every week and you can't afford it and use your credit card, you walk down the high street, you see that shop, you just can't help it, you go in, you buy, buy shoes, you buy clothes and, and you can't afford it but you're just a shopaholic, then you've got to put it to death so you don't go into the high street because if you do, you know you're going to go into the shop. So in other words, you don't put yourself in the way of temptation. You've got to put it to death. James chapter 4 verse 7. You have a responsibility to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in your Christian life. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do that. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. it says in James chapter four verse seven. Submit yourselves therefore to God. God resist the devil. And he will flee from you. You've got to resist the devil. You've got to resist temptation. By staying away from it. By not allowing it to grip you. By not allowing it to get a foothold in your life. Because if you do, it's, it's kind of like a car. Imagine you've got a car. And um, there's... Uh, the, the brakes have gone on it. Okay, the brakes have gone. And, and, and you know that they've been getting bad. The brake pads have getting, been getting bad for a while. They've not been working properly. And, and this day you, you decide to go off on the motorway and you got a feeling that the brake pads are just about to go off. They, they have gone, but you, you don't fully know that. But you, you, you sense that they're probably... They're probably going to go any time, but that day they go. The brake pads ain't working. You're going 70 miles an hour down the motorway. A lorry's in front of you. It suddenly stops. You need to press your brakes, but there's no brakes. And boom, you're back into the lorry. And that's the end of you. you, you you've got to put the brake pads on your life. Make sure everything's working fine. You've got to put to death sin in your life. Or else there's going to be a crash. A crash in your marriage, a crash in your ministry, a crash in your workplace. There's just going to be a crash. You've got to put to death even the little sins in your life. It says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15, 16. It says... Be holy for... You. For I am holy. God is holy. And we're to live a holy life. 
You look at verse 11 of Colossians. Colossians 3 verse 11. It says, But Christ is all in all. In order to put sin to death, you also make Christ your all. You make him your everything. You make him your passion. You make him all that you, all that he is for you. All that you, all, he is everything to you. You, you want to live for him. You want to bring glory to him. You want to bring honor to him. You, you have a passion for Jesus. And as you have a passion for Jesus, it'll break the, the sin in your life because that is your passion. Christ is my passion. And the more you have a passion for Christ, the more you love Christ, the more that sin will lose its grip in your life, the more you'll have power in your life, the more you'll have victory in your life, because Christ is all for you. You've got to put sin to death. Thirdly, you've got to live like Jesus. You've got to live like Jesus. you got to, if you get a, um, um, a model airplane, you get the box, pull the box open, you get a little piece of paper, it tells you all the instructions how to put that plane together as a model and in life God has given us a, 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 an instruction manual and in that instruction manual the key to it to understanding how it all fits together is Jesus Christ Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 to 17 put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies and kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearance one another, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To that which also you are called, in one body, be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing, admonish, admonishing one another, in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by him. Thanks to God and the Father by him. And verse 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. You've got to be a humble person. Christ was humble. In Philippians chapter 2 it talks about he thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and humbled himself even to the death of the cross where God highly exalted him but he humbled himself. And if you think you're the top dog all the time, if you think you're the boss all the time, if you think you know it all all the time then you're walking in pride. And you're going to cause conflict in your marriage, conflict in your ministry, conflict in your work, conflict in whatever God has called you to do because you become proud. And pride is not the way of the Father. He loves humility. Also, we need to be like Christ in not having bitterness. Verse 13. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. You have to be forgiving. It's no good holding on to bitterness. You might think you're justified in holding on to bitterness. Maybe someone or some people have really, really hurt you. Uh, and nobody knows how much they've hurt you. And you feel crushed or you have felt crushed by the hurt and the pain that somebody or some people have caused you and you've been bitter, so bitter. 
Maybe you've been able to silence that bitterness, but it's still bitterness. Maybe you, you've just put the issue out of your mind, but you've said subconsciously, I will never forgive them. Turn to Matthew chapter 6 verse 12. Matthew chapter 6 verse 12. Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Got to forgive. Verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men the trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You've got to forgive. But, but he hurt me. Forgive. But she hurt me. Forgive. But she hurt me for so long. Forgive. But he hurt me for so long. Forgive. But she hurt me so badly. Forgive. But he hurt me so badly. Forgive. They hurt me so badly. Forgive. You forgive. You let it go. You set them free. And you forgive. Matthew eighteen twenty one. And Peter said to him, uh, Lord, often shall my, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till, till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, etc. But we're to forgive. Ephesians 4.32 Ephesians 